Greetings, heroes. Welcome to Aeolus, a fully co-op civilization game where you as the heroes are building the great city of Aeolus. And what Dreamcraft Games have done here is they've done a good job in, in packaging uh, those great games that we've played on the, on the computer into a board game. The more and more I dig into it, the more and more I play it, I'm surprised on just all the aspects that they're able to put on the tabletop. Quick disclaimer, uh, this is a tabletop simulator mod. And when I first started to work on this, uh, things felt kind of small. Uh, but when I saw this at Essen, uh, it is quite large and fits on the table real nice. So what you see here, uh, don't judge it by that. I was really impressed with the, the products that I was seeing, the, the prototype. Just keep in mind, too, that uh, all the artwork and all that stuff is, is still not final. Uh, the game is in development. So, yeah. Uh, basically, this video here, we're just going to play a couple rounds and, and just show you uh, just kind of how the game, how the game works. So a uh, quick overview, uh, we're going to be playing just a quick game. Uh, there are longer games and scenarios and different things like that. Uh, this one's just a basic 10 rounds, uh, and the objective of this one is to survive at the end and to also complete a heroic event. Uh, and we have seven heroes that are joining us. Uh, in different scenarios, you can have different numbers. Uh, and when I first heard about the game, too, and uh, using seven heroes for one player, or using those same heroes for seven players, it felt off at first. Um, but now that I've gotten into it and played it, uh, it makes sense. It works, uh, and it it's great. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit more of that when we get into the game, too. Basically, each round has four phases. There'll be a setup phase where you will set up your heroes for that phase, and then there'll be a player phase, and that's simultaneous. So all seven heroes will be acting at the same time. So there's literally no downtime in it in this game which is great yeah so if you are playing a seven player game it you know shouldn't take any longer and then after that you have the enemy phase and then you have the conclusion phase and then you just you know, go into the next round and hope you survive so this is a default setup for the scenario we're running here uh, we've got two plagues out here and the starting positions for our our heroes here and the event we've drawn is up here it's going to be the crimson pestilence uh, and what we need to do to win is we just need to discover the cure and possess five algae at the end of the ground, at the end of the uh, the game, which is going to be ten rounds again. And we keep track with the rounds down here at the queen. She takes care of that for us. So the first thing we're going to need to do is, uh, according to the scenario that we're following, is run an invasion. So we'll draw this, and let's flip it over, and it's the Dorian War. So we need to roll a d6 and place... Th uh, the Dorian War token on the board. And what we're going to do is we're trying to determine where these guys come in at. And here's one through six here. Uh, and the dice will kind of tell us what we're doing here. So let's go down here and grab a dice real quick. Let me just copy this one. All right, we'll roll that. And that's going to bring them into three. So we grab our token here. And these are the advancing horde that we need to eventually take care of. Once you're done with the event, the heroes can start taking their setup phase actions now. So let's start with the queen, who on every turn, she's going to produce uh, one wool and one wheat. So we'll give her that, and also she's going to be the one to advance the round marker, which is tracked down here. So it's the first round, we'll just leave her here at one. Now, thankfully, too, that each hero uh, that comes with a, a card here that's going to describe what they do in what phase. If we had structures out in the field, which we don't yet since we're starting from scratch, uh, you would roll uh, the resource die for each resource or each uh, structure out there that produces something, and this kind of determines what it gives. We're going to do that again in the next round. I'll be able to show you that. So let's move on to the merchant, and we're going to roll this uh, D4 here, which is going to fluctuate the market. So let's see, we got a 4 there. And this market wheel kind of determines uh, how things are going in the market and what can you can sell high for and buy high or low. It's just a great way to, to bring uh, dynamics to the game. You can kind of see here what he's starting with. He's got three golds and a merchant already working for him. And this is the morale of, of the city. Now for the philosopher, he has one scientist, so he's going to produce one research. You'll be able to use that in a later round. 
Now for the priestess here, these dice are counters, and they represent the amount of faith that they have. And so right now they're starting at one, and they're going to go up one for every pair. And right now we just have one pair of blood thrall and priestess, so these will bump up to two. Now the magi is going to draw three cards. And she's going to hold on to these, and she's going to be able to pick one uh, in, during the player phase. If she wants to buy more than one, uh, she'll have to spend a gold to get that. Her first spell that she gets is for free. Now the tri-counter doesn't really have uh, any actions that it can take, unless there was a worker here. Uh, at this time, then they could uh, spend these resources here, gold and wood, and that would give them a captain. Uh, and this represents how many ships are in their fleet. Or if they set their... Uh, set them over here, they become explorers, which helps with exploration of trying to discover these things. It's going to be the same for the Hoplite, too. He doesn't have any actions he can take except for spending gold to turn workers into Hoplites. So now that we're done with the setup phase, we're going to go into the player phase where we can start getting some things done here. So as the queen, her job is to start building a lot of workers, uh, which are needed to uh, do many things, uh, and they're almost like a currency, uh, an expendable currency. So to build a worker, she either needs two wheat, and then she can get a worker. Right now she's got one. Or just one fish will give her a worker, or one meat will give her a worker. Uh, so what we can do is maybe let's start, uh, let's go build a wheat farm. Uh, and what we need to do with that, uh, we'll need to research first. So let's go up here to our philosopher, who can... Uh, if he researches his agriculture, will give us access to making wheat farms. So he'll spend his one research, and he will discover agriculture working. So what that's going to do is that's going to give us the ability to uh, to build these farms here. So let's go down here and look at these real quick. Uh, and if you look on the back of these tiles here, they're going to have uh, what it takes to produce. So we need one worker and one wood and what technology you need to have. So we have agriculture, which we just unlocked. So she's going to expend the wood in the worker that she has, and now she can place this. And when it comes to placement, you'll have to pay attention to the top here where it's got this symbol. There are some locations where you can't place them, and, and there are a few that you can. So we'll go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and place it uh, over here right next to our city and keeping it away from this plague here uh, so because it plagues can spread so uh, to other structures so I think that's a good spot right now and then on the next turn hopefully we can get some weed out of that and start producing some more workers workers are a very important commodity and are kind of the backbone to the to how you're going to build your city uh, so it's important that the queen is able to produce a lot so we can just look at the priestess here she needs workers uh, to either make blood thrall or to um, make more priestess. And uh, it, you, that's the cost there is one gold or uh, this one here. <laughs> they, if you uh, take your worker and make him a blood thrall, it kind of brings the morale of the town down. So, uh, And it's going to be the same for uh, the hoplites here too. You know, they'll need a worker. Uh, the magi, she needs workers. The philosopher. So everything, they kind of need these workers... And what they become, once they've been converted from a worker, is they become a trained worker, which are permanent and will stay around, unless they're, for whatever reason, like the, they die in the military, uh, and, and other th different things that can happen. So, uh, these workers will um, make things better for, like, the Triconter, for instance. So, every captain you have is, is a ship and a, um, a captain to protect your waters over here. Uh, or you can take these uh, trained workers and move them over here to this slot, which is Explorers. Uh, it gives you a 10% uh, better chance at finding uh, these and returning back with loot. So you can see that workers are very critical to have uh, and can greatly influence uh, the game. So for the uh, the scientists here, uh, if for every uh, scientist you have, you can spend a research and, and find more. So if you had a bunch of research and you had two scientists, you can discover two different technologies in, in one turn. And right now we only have one, so I can only find the one. Um, but the more workers you have, the quicker and 
better down the field you're going to be able to move. So let's go ahead and change to the priestess now, and let's see what we can do with her. Uh, so her actions here, we can confine plagues and stop them from spreading, or we can uh, bless the military. They can get a reroll on their combat die. We can proselytize, which is another way to uh, combat armies uh, with diplomacy. Or we can just try to see in the future with Argorary. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just uh, tick this down one and go up here to our curses and see what's going to be coming around in the future. And it looks like we're going to be having a long winter coming up. So I want to just set this here for now. So the long winter, all wood and crystal resources are destroyed. There will be no production and no exploration actions in the next round. Moral drops by four levels. So we definitely want to try to take care of this, which we can since um, we'll go over here to the Magi. She did get this card here that can cancel the event the long winter. So we'll go ahead and um, I think we'll buy this card. All right, we'll get we get one for free. Uh, and we want to buy this one as well uh, so that we can take care of that invading army that's going to be coming soon. So let's go ahead and put that back. And now we have uh, these cards here. So spend that gold to get this extra card. So the way that spell casting works is right now she's only able to cast one spell. And she's going to add the, on her turn, she can move these ones. So uh, we can move, let's see, we'll move red here. And purple there. So, and she doesn't have to move them, but it, every crystal can move one. And so now she could potentially cast three different spells. But she's only got one magi. So she still can only cast one. If she had two magis, she can cast uh, th two different spells, um, each pulling from a, a different pool here. And the, the black one here, this is the starting one. And, and the more and more you get these spread out, the more and more spells you'll be able to cast and the more magi you have. To become powerful. So the merchant, seeing that the queen's going to need some more workers, is uh, in the the market here. We can buy a gold, so we'll do that. We'll we'll spend one gold here, and uh, we'll get one wheat. We'll be able to give that to the queen later, and hopefully help her with uh, making some more workers. The triconter is going to be able to take two actions, uh, and right now it's, there's nothing in our seed to go attack, so. We're just going to be doing some exploration. And the way this is going to work, on the back side of these tokens, there's going to be a percentage. And the higher the number is, the more difficult it is to get the item. So it's going to be real easy to get this uh, here, the three fish, or, or the meat. Um, and the six algae, that's going to be nice too, because if you remember, that's that's what we need to have at the end of the game to succeed at, at carrying uh, the Crimson Death. So that's something we're going to need to try to get eventually. And the way it's going to work is... Uh, you're supposed to roll D100s, uh, but I don't have the, the percentage here assigned. So just imagine this is the first digit and this is the second digit. So we'll take one action here, and we're going to go for the meat here. And we could use this to build some more workers. So it's 6%. should be pretty easy to do. So let's roll our first number here. All right. And we'll just say that that is a 53. And we have su succeeded in that. So we'll take this. Put it on the port. And on this next action, we'll explore again and draw a new token from the bag. And it gives us some void crystals, which uh, looks like they're pretty easy to still get. Uh, so with the algae again, we'll just need to uh, move some more explorers over there. And that's going to take that down 10% 10, 10 per explorer. So making that a, l a lot easier. We're getting closer to the objective that we need to do. So that's, that's nice. And we can focus on other things and not worry about that right off the bat. So our Hoplite here, seeing that uh, we've got some more coming, he's going to probably want to move closer there. And they've got a speed of 2, so that means he can move uh, 2 hexes. So let's see, we'll go 1, 2, and we'll turn to face them. That doesn't really matter, it's just, just for thematics there. Uh, and yeah, he'll be kind of ready to slow them down and uh, when they get closer. Now that all the heroes have taken their turn, it's going to be the enemy phase. So we'll start with the Dorians here, uh, and they're going to be moving toward the city. They're attempting to to destroy it, and if they ever get to the city, uh, that's pretty much instant game over. So let's see here. They'll make their move, and they've got an option here that's equal distance. So we'll need to roll a die here. So one through three, uh, we'll just have them go this direction. 
Let's see. Two. All right, so they are moving to this hex. Uh, they will avoid the plagues if they can. If they try to go through the plague or they are forced to, they'll actually suffer some damage. And so, you know, maybe letting those plagues spread <laughs> could be a good thing. Uh, and now sp they would spread now, but there are no structures around them, so they're going to stay where they're at. And any other events and any kind of bad things that are going on typically happen during the enemy phase. And so now that's, that's pretty much it for that. And we'll move to the conclusion phase. Now we're going to be able to collect all those resources that are kind of hanging out there. And, and also be able to pass things around. So like the merchant can if they wanted to. And just to earn the favor of the queen. And we just give them that wheat. Um, we have from, from the port here. We've got this three meat. So let's go ahead and take that. Uh, and now the queen's going to have three meat. But knowing that the she may be getting this uh, some some wheat from the farm here. And she doesn't really need to generate that many workers right off the bat. So, And having gold is important, too, to convert those workers into trains. So she's going to go ahead and just give that wheat back. And let's just give them a meat um, there because the queen, again, she's going to automatically generate a wheat anyways. All right, now on to round two. So first thing we'll want to do is move, move our round marker here. And then we need to draw an event, and the scenario says we need to draw, uh, or we have already got our curse drawn out here because um, the priest just looked into the future. And it's going to be the longest winter. And so we do have that heat wave that's going to be nice if we try to cancel this. If not, um, this is going to activate during the enemy phase. So definitely we're going to try to take care of this before we get there. We don't want to take those losses. And then we need to draw a blessing. So let's see what our blessing is here. So this tells us we need to uh, place the token for Crystals and Whispers on hand, Sand Hex 6. And it looks like it's going to discover, help us in our uh, with our Philosopher and discover the Occult Tech. And we'll be able to use that without having any of the prerequisites. So um, what we'll need to do is we'll need to move one of our characters over onto this. Um, and see, here's the Sand Hex 6. I can see that the number down there at the bottom in the sand area. So yeah, if we could just move on our characters over there and get onto that, uh, we'll be able to get this blessing and discover it. So on the player setup phase now, so let's start with our queen. We give us uh, one wheat and one wood. And now we're gonna to get to roll the resource die for all of the structures that are gonna produce any type of uh, resources. And so we have our wheat farm here. So let's give this a roll and see what happens. All right, and so this is going to give us three. We're going to place this out on the farm here itself. Is there still potential that we're going to lose some of that in case um, as those invaders and, and things like that, uh, we could lose that. So we want to try to protect that. Uh, that's a pretty good uh, load of resources there. So let's go over this dice too real quick. Uh, this means you get nothing. Uh, this means that the farmers didn't do anything. Uh, and they're giving you gold. Hopefully that you don't get angry at them. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, so here's the plague. And this one, that was what we got. So we got three resources for that. And this is just one resource. And then uh, the big one that gives you five total, which is represented by one big cube. So that's the result we were hoping for. But yeah, three is not too bad. And at least it's not the plague. So we're off to a good start on that farm. For the merchant here, again, we'll just... Roll the die here and see how the market's acting. So we got four again. Good, so we got three gold for selling meat there. So we can go ahead and we can sell the meat this round and make some money off that. So that seemed to work out pretty good. The uh, The merchant is able to manipulate uh, the wheel here. He can actually roll it back and forth uh, by one and to see if he can find a more favorable outcome. Uh, but we'll stick with this and that's that's what we want. And then we could go down here, and if we had placed a worker here in the last round, we could then try to move that over if we had the resources for it, but we don't. So we'll move along. Okay, and this is going to bump up one for every pair, and we only have one pair, so move these all up to one. And again, we don't have anything here to uh, convert into more hopolites. And what, we got more workers coming. All right, so she's going to draw three cards. And then we'll be able to pick one of these. 
on the next and he's going to produce uh, one research okay, now we'll move on to the player phase so I really want to try to take care of this long winter that's coming up and and because that can really determine on how things go so let's start with with the magi here now uh, so she's gonna need to pick a card um, and I like this one here about getting extra gold so we'll take that one for free uh, and these ones will go on the back of the bottom of the deck here stuff around there we go okay all right so the We'll go ahead and cast a spell now, too. Let's go for Heat Wave, which is what we need to do to cancel the event. So we'll spend that crystal. Now, the casting spells is, can be tricky, too, because you have a 75% chance of succeeding. Uh, and the way we determine that is, again, it's just rolling a, a D100. So we'll just highlight these. Roll that. And so they gave us the 67. So let's say I failed, though, and only got 7 out of this roll. Um, and what happens is, uh, on a success, you get the top part of the card. Uh, on a failure, you get the bo bottom part of the card. So if I would have succeeded, which I did, uh, we cancel the event, which is great. Um, but as a failure, the long winter will repeat on the next round. So um, just for the sake of the video, we're going to say that I failed that, and uh, we'll just leave that in play. And you get to keep your spells. Uh, they don't disappear. Uh, once you've used them, so uh, you do lose the crystal, so you'll have to start resourcing those and farming for those. Um, but well, you'll keep those, but you can only cast one spell, the same spell once per round, so you just can't keep using it. Uh, now I really want to just kind of build up, try to get this fire strike uh, eventually, and use it against the uh, incoming evasion. And so, in order to get more crystals, though, for us to spend, uh, we're going to need to. Uh, research some more here. So gem seeding. We'll spend this and now we can unlock gem seeding and what that's going to do, that's going to give us access to uh, the ability to um, uh, har farm some some crystals here. So we'll give these to the queen now that we've unlocked the technology uh, and we'll flip them over here and you see it's going to take us one worker and one wood uh, and we'll be able to place that onto uh, the symbols there that we see there in red. So, yeah, we'll, we'll unlock that, and let's see here. So we spend that, and so we needed a, a worker. So we'll spend our wheat there to give us one worker. And now we'll be able to build a field. So you can see there, there's some places you can and can't put these. And we'll go ahead and just set these down here so they're protected. And uh, you know, we could start producing more red crystals for our magi to start blasting those enemies that are coming. So let's take care of some of this pestilence too, and we'll use our priestess here. So she's got a speed of two, and we're gonna use confide. So we'll spend one point there, and then we're gonna move her one, two, and she'll be able to take care of this adjacent one. Uh, we'll just take a marker here, place it on top of that. And now this can't spread even if there's um, structures around it. So it's a good way to help stop the spread of uh, these diseases. And now for the Hoplite, let's see here. Um, you know, seeing that the Magi now has, uh, let's think about that, the Fiery Strike. Um, if we went head-to-head -head with them right now, they're very powerful. They have a power level of 5. Uh, and so they're they're quite even. Um, it might be better if I whittled down uh, their power uh, before attacking with them. So he does have that move of move of two. So let's move him back uh, back a little bit. And I'm also going to move my my magi up a little bit so we can hit her with the, uh, hit them with the fireball. So one, two, uh, just getting her ready to be able to step forward and and launch that into their face. Well, over to the merchant here. We're going to go ahead and sell this meat off and get us some gold. So because the market is in favor, though, for us, we get three gold for that one meat. Um, another triconter. Let's see. I think it'll be good to... We, we don't have any ships around, so we're going to take this captain and make him an explorer. 
and that's going to give us a 10% bonus. So we could try to speed up some researching here. We got, I uh, just need a 21%, and with this Explorer, we only need 11 now. So it's a pretty good chance. Let's see, we'll roll those real quick and see. Yep, 35, so we'll, we'll take that. And uh, for the second action, let's go for the algae, which is 39, and we only need 29. And, oh, we failed. Okay, so we don't get to take that home yet. So let's take this and bring it down to the port, and we'll be able to collect that again at the end. And that's going to be, yeah, that's, that's everyone. So now we'll move on to the enemy phase. So we're going to start with the, uh, the long winter here. And so, let's see, we, we failed to do it. So all wood and crystal resources are destroyed. There'll be no production and no exploration during the next round. Morale drops by four levels. So, oh, that's not good. We don't have any crystals out, thankfully. And we don't have, do we have wood? No, nope. yeah, okay. So we're good there. Um, but morale did drop down to four. That's not good. And this is going to affect our, our army here. Uh, this gives us a bonus to our attack. So, uh, yeah, that's... We'll need to, to work on getting that up. Uh, there's various ways of, of taking care of that. Um, you can see uh, that'd be like donating uh, if we had uh, crystals and whatnot. However, the market turns out different things to donate will help bring up the morale and give us our power level back. And then the plagues would spread if there are structures. There's none. And then the invasion guys here, they will move one step closer. So we're going to have to really take care of them in the next round. If not, we're going to, to, to lose instantly. So now we're on the next last phase here of the round, which will be the conclusion phase, where we can collect our resources here. So we get our, our three wheat here. It's going to be nice. And we've got research that we got. Oh, he's going to get four. So it may be good to, to give him a worker. So we can start unlocking more things uh, quicker. And that will be the end of round two. And that concludes this video. So just thank you so much for watching and taking the time here to, to dig in deeper to, to learn more about the game. Uh, and there is lots more to learn. Uh, as you can see already, there already is a lot of of options and, th and things to choose from and with all the expansions you can only imagine it's going to be adding a lot more fun and replayability to this game so thank you for taking the time to watch the video and have a great day